heterogeneous reactions we have been talking. Heterogeneous reactions, yesterday we started this and uh, I just as I told you I just want to give one or two examples, so that you will know what is the difference between heterogeneous reaction and uh, homogeneous reaction. And we go deeper into homogeneous reactions, because that is needed for this uh, reactor theory course. Okay. So, in heterogeneous uh, reactions, yesterday we discussed about catalytic and non-catalytic. Okay. So, uh, the idea here is that how do we develop a rate equation for heterogeneous reaction, if it is a catalytic reaction. And also non-catalytic reaction, uh, I mean uh, the, the rate, how do you develop for non-catalytic reaction. So, that is the idea. So, we have taken catalytic example as ammonia, right. Catalytic reaction, ammonia synthesis. that is what is the example what we have taken and uh, this ammonia synthesis as we know already there is not a new process that is a old process. So, we have taken a packed bed. Okay. So, then this is coming out this is entering somewhere here I have taken for my kinetic equations. Okay. I have to take a single particle this is true uh, you know even if I conduct this ammonia synthesis catalyst uh, as iron right fluidized bed also I can take. In fluidized bed, these particles will not be stationary, not like packed, they will be moving. Yesterday also I have demonstrated now with people, particles move. So, they will be moving. So, even when they are moving, I can pull out one particle. What is happening around that particle? You know, this is the original system. So, for all heterogeneous systems, you should have that thinking of, uh, you know, some thinking about the process. If it is fluidized bed, okay. so what is happening? Particles are constant around that you have the flow of reactants. Okay. So, then what are the steps that are required right that, that we understand. Fluidized bed also now we understand fluidized bed will be something like this, where <coughs> gases are entering gas, gas, gas liquid also can be same. So, here are the particles this is the catalyst and then it comes out this is fluidized bed. So, when uh, we are uh, making these particles float with the support of uh, you know the, uh, the liquid or gas, you are able to follow me you know fluidized bed, because most of the chemical engineers must know what is a fluidized bed. Right? I think Arya in, in your uh, waste water treatment also fluidized beds are widely used. Right? So, if, uh, I think in chemistry they may not be 100 percent knowing that, I think someone has to help them. So, you take uh, this uh, uh, for example, sand because it is easy to imagine. Sand all of you would have seen, I think do not tell me that you have never seen sand. Okay, yeah. You have seen sand no? Yeah. Okay. So, sand you just take in a cylindrical column, where you have a distributor plate at the bottom okay. and now send the air for example, air you cannot see, but we know we can feel right. When you put fan uh, starting you know air is touching you, but you cannot see it right. Yeah. So, then you are sending air or some other fluid also, but air is easy for us to imagination. This air when it is going through the perforations, it will push the particles and then it also moves through the particles to go. Right? If I am using very, very small uh, flow rates, then air has just the capacity to move through the particles and now slowly increase that velocity. I am just telling particularly for this chemistry people and those who have not been exposed to that. So, slowly I am increasing that flow rate here through this. Before that you have sand just filled up in that, that is theoretically a packet bed. Why packet bed? So, that is a packet bed because particles are not moving. Then slowly introduce the air, then at very low velocities those uh, you know the gas will go through the perforations and also through the particles between the particles not through the particles means not inside the particle okay, around the particle and we have in a packet bed uh, the what is called uh, void edge porosity of the particle of the bed. So, through that it goes. So, you keep on increasing uh, you keep on increase uh, the flow rate a little bit little bit by little bit. So, uh, initially when it is very very small then it will only move through the particles, 
but when it has sufficient uh, velocity, then it starts moving the particles. That is the first time. Okay, so that means the particles will try to get adjusted on its own when the uh, uh, when there is a such a velocity where it is able to move the particles a little bit. You slightly increase even above that, then the entire particles also will be floating. And when I look at one particular particle, then this gas is sufficient, the gas velocity is sufficient to keep that particle under suspension. Okay. Theoretically, you can also be fluidized if you are going by a motor bike very, very high speed. Correct, no? Because what is happening is the drag force of the air which is acting on your body. Right? If you have not properly hold it and then you know legs are not firmly on the pedals, then you may be fluidizing. That is what I am telling. Afterwards, you may be pneumatically conveying. That means <laughs> You will travel with, you will travel with the air. <laughs> okay, that is also same thing happens here. Sometimes you float, and afterwards you will be travelled. So here also, all these particles are just suspended in air stream. Okay, that you know we have many lot of dust is there now in the air. You can see that no? on your cycle, or if you have car, or if you have your furniture and all that, and if your room is open, the windows are open. Then you can see after one day you go and touch it, there is a lot of dust. So, those particles also practically fluidizing, right? If they are not moving from place to place. When it is moving from place to place, then they are also pneumatically conveyed. And finally, it will go and then it is uh, unfortunate that it will enter your room because there is no sufficient amount of uh, breeze there to go away. So, then they settle down. Okay? So, that is what, what we are talking. And uh, even this uh, catalytic reaction, the solid particles are catalysts. And the gas which I am telling here is ammonia plus, so not ammonia. Uh, hydrogen plus nitrogen together mixture. Okay, you may uh, send it in uh, stoichiometric quantities or whatever. Okay, so that is the one what you are talking. Even here, I can simply pull out a particle. Not only this, we also have what are called rotary kilns. Have you heard of them? It is a kiln, big tube, cylindrical tube. It will be slowly moving. You put now this side uh, the solid particles, right, and Opposite side, you can also put hydrogen and uh, hydrogen. The particles may be slowly coming, and you are taking back again, introducing them. You take back and again introducing them. That is also a possibility. No one does that, okay? But that is also a possibility. Why? Uh, all these things are possibilities, but these are difficult possibilities than packet bed. Packet bed is the simplest. This also can be used. There is another uh, reactor also called moving bed reactor. You take the packet bed and put a hole here not distributor. Distributor has small holes where the particles cannot fall. Only air can enter or, or uh, nitrogen and uh, hydrogen can enter. So, now you can put big holes there where the solids can slowly come down. So, then you are also sending in the opposite direction the gas. Now, the entire bed is moving that is why it is called moving bed. Okay, understood no? Uh, these, these, these are not uh, generally difficult. Okay? So, that moving bed also when I want to develop a rate expression for catalytic reactions, I will pull out one particle again there. Right? See, the chemical reaction rate will not change in all these systems. What will change is the physical rates. That means, how mass is transferred to the surface. But in all these things, what is our imagination? We have a particle. Okay? Yesterday, I I have drawn horizontally, but now we'll, I will sh so more more truly I will just draw this. So this is how if I pulled up, because I pulled out one particle. Why I should pull out one particle? Because let me imagine that what is happening in this one particle. Same thing must be happening to all the particles. So if I develop this equation, and this equation uh, yeah is valid at any point where you pulled out, and because it is a packed bed, there is a change of concentration from this place to this place. Then I can integrate because this is a distributed parameter system. That means the concentration is changing from this end to this end. Whereas here it may not. I mean that we better not talk now about fluidized bed. Fluidized bed is one of the most difficult uh, reactors to be modeled, to be constructed, to be uh, to, to operate also. It is not that easy, but still very very efficient one. But why it is efficient also I will discuss if you take the course next uh, semester. But right now I think we will just only mention the names. Okay, good. 
So, that is why in all these systems, whatever reactor you choose, whatever system, uh, you know, because we have many, many possibilities for the reactor, heterogeneous systems. So, now if you see uh, this particular bed, right, there are two phases. And in our diagram, we have contacting uh, pattern, right. So, now we have to talk about for each phase, what is the contacting pattern. When you are talking about homogeneous reaction, there is a single phase. So, you are only talking about contacting pattern of that particular phase, whether it is in perfect mixing or whether it is perfect plug flow or whether it is in third one. Ah, perfect mixing is mixing flow. Puja. Plug flow already we told. Ah, do not forget batch I say. Maybe LKG information, but still because that is what first we learned you know, batch. So, we have only three contacting patterns whether it is batch or plug flow or mixture flow. Plug flow, mixture flow are continuous okay? and whereas batch, but you have to now identify for each phase here how they are moving. That is very important again for us. So, when I talk about uh, this packet bed, I have solid phase and gas phase, these two no? non catalytic gas solid reaction. So, now I have to tell what is the contacting pattern for solid in packet bed. We have only three, just imagine I say, we have only three batch plug flow, mixture flow, batch. batch. Why? Because solids are not moving, they are there. Okay? So, that is why, so this is batch and what about gas, how it is moving? It is plug flow. Why? I can tell, I mean when you look at the packet bed fluid mechanically also you can prove that most of the time your plug flow or the, the velocity profile will be flat. If you are operating properly in the, with Reynolds number, no book gives about the connection between Reynolds number and uh, plug flow. Only KK gives okay? <laughs> that connection. That is why please remember when you are operating packet bed, it should be in the turbulent uh, Reynolds numbers. What is the turbulent uh, that Reynolds number for turbulence in a packet bed? Greater than 500. Do not tell for 40,000 and all that. 40,000 also will be, but I think starts from 500 onwards. <coughs> okay? Good, excellent. You remember that. Yeah, so that is why here you have plug flow P f. Now, my, my design expression will depend on whether I am choosing solids or whether I am choosing gas. And here I cannot choose uh, solids because they are not, uh, they are, that is not the phase uh, where the uh, catalyst is converted from one to the other. We are only talking about in the reactor conversion from reactant to products only gas is converted from reactants to products, whereas catalyst here only helps me in increasing that rate of reaction. Right? So, that is why that uh, even though it is batch, I cannot write any equation for uh, a catalyst particle because uh, as far as conversion is concerned, because the reaction is taking place only within the, I mean, it is taking place on the surface of the catalyst and inside the catalyst, but what I am converting is my entering reactants and then the, the products will come out. So, that is why, yeah. Call it as homogeneous. How can we call homogeneous? We can, because the solid does not react, the catalyst does not react, we can consider it to be a part of the reactant itself. Yeah, any, any, any answer for that? I think let, uh, I will make you fight. Yes. I will be referee. Yes, sir? Possible? No. No, that is actually wrong. That is actually wrong. Why? Actually, reaction is takes place in the surface of the iron catalyst. Yeah. So, without iron there is no reaction at all. Okay. He says that we also take that as one phase Master. and everything together. Master. Yeah. Master. Who said that? Master. Okay. Yeah. Anupriya. Anupriya, no? Yeah. Slowly getting my photos also clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the names, yeah. So, important thing is there is extra mass transfer that is coming into the <coughs> Whereas, when you talk about homogeneous, I think this is a good question what he has asked, others also may have this confusion a number of times. When we talk about homogeneous system, there is no external mass transfer coming into the picture. Actually, that is the definition of homogeneous and heterogeneous. In heterogeneous system, you need mass to be moved from one phase to the other phase. Here, the mass is moving from gas phase to the solid phase. If there is no solid, there is no reaction. Correct? No? It is not reacting with solid, it is reacting in the presence of solid because that is a catalyst. right? So, that is why you cannot now say that you have an heterogeneous uh, homogeneous system. 
it is heterogeneous because the necessarily here this is what next one I was trying to tell you know. Yeah. So, this one I have a film around this and uh, the yeah here I have uh, nitrogen and hydrogen going and here I have N 2 H 2 and also N H 3 because that is reacted after this particle contacted there and then uh, it is coming out. So, now this N 2 and H 2 without contacting this if it is going out then there is no reaction. So, for the reaction to take place this N 2 and H 2 have to diffuse through the film, then it has to go to the surface. If it is only non porous iron, non porous iron then the reaction is occurring only on the surface, but this mass transfer step is must. Then the reaction rate that is happening on the particle. So, the reaction that is taking place on the particle we call it as chemical reaction, chemical uh, reaction rate and then this mass transfer step we call it as physical rate step. That is why you have in the diagram under kinetics physical and chemical both together. So, now for heterogeneous both are required. So, that is why now when I write this simple equation later you will know what kind of rate expression you get because I do not want to complicate it, it because so that first we have to understand the basic things and then we can extend you know next one is only algebra that is all. If you understand this concept next thing is only algebra that means equation will be more complicated. So, you have to use spend more time uh, for actually finding out the rate that is all the uh, difference. So, that is why we have now uh, Abdul you understood now no why you cannot call it as uh, homogeneous I mean yeah. But actually again when you take next uh, semester this uh, course on um, chemical and catalytic reaction engineering, there what actually he said was also right. Under some conditions we will take the entire system as pseudo homogeneous packet bed, pseudo homogeneous packet bed. There are particles, but I do not feel the particles under certain conditions. Okay. That conditions I cannot discuss because I think we have to talk about. Uh, homogeneous systems more for understanding. So, that is why uh, you have that information also the and, and the most of the time the models we are using for packet bed is what he suggested is his homogeneous system pseudo homogeneous models. There are class of models where models means writing trying to write equations uh, okay, trying to write the phenomena in terms of equations that is all modeling. That is why phenomena is important you that is why I am telling you so many times take the particle out and then imagine that there is a flow around that then you have the step 1 as mass transfer through the film to the surface and if it is non porous then I have only one step that is reaction occurring on the surface and after reaction uh, uh, there is no use of uh, that reaction if N H 3, N 2, H 2 all are there on the surface without coming out correct no. I do not get any product it is sticking only to the surface, but that cannot happen by nature because uh, ammonia reaction is taking place uh, the reaction is taking place on the surface ammonia is produced there at the point of production you have the concentration of hydrogen more uh, no, not hydrogen ammonia more. So, at the outlet you have not outlets outside in the bulk concentration of ammonia is less. So, it is natural phenomena you cannot stop it right. So, whether you have a good smell or bad smell if it is released from your body you cannot stop it because that is the nature God will take care of it he will spread it uniformly happily. Okay. So, so that is why when I have the scent and all that I think everyone will enjoy not only me. Why? It is not my greatness. It is the greatness of the nature because my whatever scent I have that concentration is not there with Gopinath equal concentration. So, the if there is exactly same concentration no I will keep my smell with him and he, he keeps his smell with him. Because his concentration there is no gradient it cannot move. So, that is the reason why ammonia after formed here it will come out that is what what you are seeing at the outlet here. Okay. So, that is what is the entire phenomena that is taking place. Now, to write the equations let us list now for uh, uh, non porous particle, non porous particle what is step 1? Step 1 is mass transfer m t from bulk to this is bulk, this is bulk and this is film. Okay, that is film and this one is Fe catalyst, non porous catalyst. So, now all these three we have now uh, M T of uh, yeah 
whenever you are writing mass transfer, I have been telling you this is the difficult thing in mass transfer. When you go to you know fluid mechanics, also everything put together, you will write you know momentum transfer, right? And in the heat transfer also, entire uh, whatever number of phases you have, the entire thing you you talk uh, talk about uh, what is the total heat that is contained. But when you come to mass transfer only, you have to identify each and every species, right? So that is why when you are writing here, uh, if I am calling my uh, hydrogen is the limiting reactant because normally that is what is used in limiting reactant. So, that is my A, N 2 plus, okay, sorry, let me also write this, H 2 gas, better write, N 2 gas giving me in the presence of F E 2 N H 3, correct, huh? 2 N H 3 gas, this is 3, yeah, 3 H 2, that is balanced, okay and in the presence of Fe, this is the reaction. So, my A is this limiting reactant, you can also choose N2, I mean that is not a problem for us, but that is my A. So, that is why if I write here, uh, I think I better write here then, one is Mt of uh, A, A you can write here, this is B giving R. Okay, corresponding numbers and all that you can take. Mt of A from bulk to surface through filling, that is step 1, right, correct, no? Mass transfer of A from bulk to surface through the filling. Then second step, because it is a non-porous particle, that is what, what we have taken, non-porous particle right reaction now you see i am simplifying things here next semester it will be more complicated so whatever is happening i am not you know but, but actually if you look at the molecular level hydrogen will go and get absorbed on the surface then n2 fuel also is coming because it is the gas phase it is stoichiometrically mixed and then you are sending it right so n2 also will get absorbed and uh, again you know how deep you go depends on our mind only but as engineers, we are not going that deep. So, what we just imagine is hydrogen got uh, absorbed there, nitrogen is also getting absorbed there, they somehow decompose uh, uh, to the intermediates and those things will come together and then you have NH3 formed and because of the concentration gradient, NH3 leaves that is desorption of the product and then it comes out through the film and then finally, joins the bulk, okay? that is what. But in fact, if you go to the mechanism for which that Ertel, I told you, E R T L, Ertel uh, Nobel Prize, he got Nobel Prize for sending, for, for exactly proving this mechanism experimentally. It is not that easy the way I told you. Hydrogen something it will happen, nitrogen something will happen, I think energy, there are so many beautiful things what he has explained in his actual mechanism on the surface how the molecules are uh, behaving for the reaction to take place. He has mathematically proved and also experimentally found out the same thing what is happening, what he has proved mathematically. That is why he got Nobel Prize. But as engineers, we are not doing that. Our thing is, okay, I need hydrogen, I need nitrogen, both of them went to the surface, something happened between them, got uh, the product and then I am happy to have that product. Right? But if you are a scientific engineer, okay, engineer also can be scientific, then you will go deeper and deeper and then look at the molecules, what is happening now. That is why you have the nanotechnology and all that, because we think that we have understood all chemical engineering. Then now, engineering is you know macroscopic and science is microscopic or nanoscopic, you can go to even nanoscope level and then try to find out what is happening. And this nanotechnology entire thing started only with that, because it is exactly you know one simplest example is how on this planet life is coming out. If you take any mammals, sperm and egg, what is the shape? We do not know. Shapes we know, but inside that cells and all that also you know, shapeless, only cell. So, with the time, with the reactions, with the conditions changing, slowly it can be a bull or it can be a man or it can be a woman or it can be a monkey or all these things. But what is the starting point? Only that very, very small minute things. What a wonderful creation. That is why you know humans of course, we can uh, when they get pregnant and also you know how the body, the, uh, the baby is growing, 
all that nowadays you can also see in the YouTubes and all that, at various uh, three weeks, five weeks, ten weeks like that. You know what is that the nature is trying to do? It is using the nanotechnology to build up by adding more and more, more and more, finally to bring to a shape. That is what exactly we are trying to do in nanotechnology. We go to the atomic level and then now try to arrange those atomic levels and to a particular shape, to a particular product. Nature has already done that. Otherwise, you and me would have not been here discussing CRE. You know, if nature has not done that. So, that is what is the meaning of nanotechnology. Please remember, I do not know, all of you will be happy to take uh, nanotechnology, happy to do research in uh, nanotechnology, maybe without understanding the basics. Okay. So, and what we thought was, I gave you the example, you know, in Malaysia, when I went, that girl beautifully told me that, uh, sir, you bring hydrogen, you bring sulfur, you bring O4, that is what is wanted, you know, in nanotechnology level. I will simply pull out one hydrogen molecule, simply pull out uh, some uh, O4, some, you know, sulfur and then put them together. Okay, Abdul, take it. This may come after maybe 200 years, 300 years later in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, hospitals. When you go for, for, for a particular disease, I can guarantee you will have much more diseases at the time. Okay, because we are not uh, following the nature here, no? we are only following ourselves. Okay. So, then you know the doctor will go and then he will not write any prescription. He has a lab, you know, now you already seen in some movies, where the, now this dragging has come in uh, cell phone and all that, you know, pull like this, like this, like this, you will get all the messages. Earlier, there was a movie called Minority Report. So, there if you see the computers like this, like this, like this, like this, you know, all structures, you put all, the, he brings this way, this way, this way, this way and then finally, you will get a structure. That is what it may be happening in every doctor's room. He may be taking all molecules stored, entire periodic table, pull this, pull this, pull this, pull this, oh, this is medicine, take finish over. That is what is nanotechnology. So, when we are talking now at present as chemical engineers, we are not talking about that particular thing. That is adsorption. Then we have the decomposition after adsorption and all that molecules decomposing. Then you have surface reaction. That means, the molecules, uh, the intermediates coming together and then reacting and then of course, producing the product. Then you have the product coming out. Right? So, those steps we are not talking. Uh, to make the simple things, so to make the point, what is the difference? between heterogeneous and homogeneous. That is the main thing now. So, that is why step 2 is surface reaction. The surface reaction contains adsorption, desorption and uh, surface reaction. Again, you know, surface reaction is between the intermediates and all that. Okay? All that we are not talking. Good? Yeah. Then, what is the third step? Actually, before this, there is another step if it is a porous particle. If it is a porous particle, other thing is, okay, something will get uh, go to the surface, uh, external surface, but there is a lot of uh, internal surface that is available as pores. So, it will diffuse into the pores. That is another mass transfer step. Diffusion is a mass transfer. Right? So, that step also we are not taking. That is why simplified to have non-porous particle. Where, yeah, non-porous particle. This is one. What is the third step now? Now, mass transfer of product, uh, if I say R, yeah. R is the product, mass transfer of R from surface to bulk through again film. Simplest assumption is okay, one molecule is going into the uh, through the film to the surface, getting reacted, another molecule is coming out, then we have some kind of adjustment between these two, then you will have a rate expression for mass transfer. That is what, what you have studied in your uh, film theory. That is what, I think you know something is coming in this direction, something is coming equimolar counter diffusion we will say and then we know what is the equation, what you have to use, simplest one. And we are not using here diffusion equation, even though there is a connection between diffusion and mass transfer. I do not know the, whether that connection is known to you or not. Okay? So, that is why now I have to write these three steps, but right now I am imagining that my reaction, this one is not even, because I am simplifying many things just to make the point. Now, even this reaction is not reversible. Okay? It is not reversible reaction. I mean, do not think that ammonia is not reversible. I am just simplifying that this A plus B going to R is not a reversible reaction. So, what are the steps that will eliminate if I say that the reaction is not reversible? Because at steady state, all these three steps must be 
equal for the reaction to happen and also for the product to come out right but even these three steps i can still further simplify if i say that the reaction is not reversible reaction where is mass transfer of unreacted a and b coming in these three steps i am talking about these three three steps product is coming out from the surface after reaction second step is reaction first step is reactant uh, transfer through the which uh, step you can eliminate one of these steps can be eliminated if i say reversible reaction what is the meaning of that that means the product is converted back in again converted yeah so right yeah so that means the product is also affecting the rate the moment i say irreversible reaction then product doesn't have any effect on rate then which step you can eliminate now excellent how do that right so that's why the thinking i say expanding your brain a little bit delta x delta x delta x so by the time course is over that had we become this much okay that is good that is what what we want it's not the physical increase okay the knowledge increase that means you know this is what is the problem you are not able to think beyond what the teacher tells so that is very simple only now now you see reversible reaction what is the effect now definitely the product also will affect the rate of reaction so i want to simplify mathematics so that's why i say that now okay let us assume now we have reversible irreversible reaction so that means the product doesn't have any effect so that means this step also can be ignored now under steady state steady state step 1 equal to step 2 correct no the other one also is there but that is not participating in the uh, reaction and when i want to develop an equation this is the mass transfer step so many moles are going under steady state conditions so many moles per unit time must react correct no and they have to come out but they are coming out in third step but uh, it is not changing the rate then why are you not considering the third equation yeah because uh, to uh, uh, what is the idea of writing all these three steps what is going on that surface how to develop a rate expression yes okay how to develop a rate expression now by assuming irreversible uh, reaction my rate expression is not affected with the third step right why because rate is not changed by the product it formed but again you know in the reversible direction uh, that will again decompose to some reactant that, that's what the reversible uh, thing you know that is not there that possibility is not there so that's why first two steps itself is enough for me so now steady state rate of mass transfer okay let me also write rate of mass transfer of a must be equal to rate of reaction <coughs> of a on the surface rate of reaction because these two i can now say that it is minus r a so now <coughs> uh, what is the equation this is minus r a what is the equation for rate of mass transfer of a it is simple film theory film is there through the film the mass is going uh, you know to the to reach the surface so then what is the equation you use mass transfer equation so that can be kg into yeah so now uh, one more step i have forgotten to tell you this can be now imagined as like this this is the surface of the catalyst this is the surface of the catalyst okay so then this is the film correct no this is the film now outside i have bulk right so if i want to draw the concentration profile this will be cab or okay cab that is cab okay now there definitely there is some concentration gradient inside the film so now if i show that that will be something like this what is this one this is ca yes so drawing this concentration profile will make me the things will become very easy to write the equation i know now i have to write an equation through the film and i also know the concentration on the surface and also concentration in the bulk so that is why and i know that the uh, this mass transfer rate also equal to reaction rate that's why i am interested in reaction rate that's why i have written minus r a i can also write that one equal to na okay but i am interested in rate of reaction so that is why we write here minus n kg that is the proportionality constant mass transfer coefficient then cab minus cas 
right okay now this must be equal to rate of reaction rate of reaction means you should have an equation for rate of reaction that is the pure chemical step this is pure mass transfer step because now you are taking both of them into account that is why in heterogeneous system that is the extra step this physical step this mass transfer step you will not see this in homogeneous why because mass is available all through without again transferring from one place to the other place it is there if you have a molecule there may be 10 b molecules if there is b molecule there may be 10 a molecules so that is why for any time for the reaction to take place sufficient number of a sufficient number of b is there but here it is not there unless it is transported to the surface there is no reaction even though catalyst is capable of converting anything that comes there there is no reaction so that is the reason why uh, this extra step that is coming because there must be some transfer from one phase to the other phase in any heterogeneous system where mass transfer also plays a role right and i have the film thickness so big no mass is going inside the surface so then what will be the rate of reaction it will be very very less that means it is affecting no what is that affecting mass transfer is affecting physical step is affecting that is why in that uh, diagram we write chemical and physical that is what is the exact difference between heterogeneous system and homogeneous system where mass transfer will not come into picture good so now what again i have tremendous assumptions here what now i assume is for easy mathematics i will assume that i have first order this is the rate constant k and cas please remember the reaction is occurring on the surface here reaction is uh, taking place on the surface that's why it is cas it is not cab okay good and the assumption here is that i have first order rate this is first order directly k into cs i can also have second order i can have any complicated order this may be again m plus cas but this concept is same equating that is same okay good now that i don't want to complicate right now so now this is the equation what i have as as engineer again i tell you that you know we should know how easily one can do things for me which composition measuring is easy which concentration measurement is easy cab i don't have to go to on the surface and then find out what is the concentration of cas that is why from this i can now eliminate cas i can now eliminate cas so at steady state when these two are same then now we can you can eliminate so minus ra okay first let me do this kg cab minus cas equal to k cas so i am writing all uh, spoon feeding steps cab minus kg cas equal to kcs cas okay somewhere i think i have not uh, started putting them okay from here i think this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 4 5 from 5 can i say that i have an equation cas equal to kg cab by yeah kg plus k so this is equation number 6 so now <coughs> still my problem is not over that means i should now find out what is minus ra right how do i find out i can either substitute that um, my idea is that cas i should not have in my equation why if cas is there i have to go to surface and then measure the concentration right but uh, without that i have to express the rate in terms of only cab bulk concentration where simply i can take the bulk uh, gas and then now try to find out what is the conversion there or what is the concentration there okay so that's why now yeah, so i can use either this equation or this equation because this is also equal to this or that now substitute easy one always humans go for easy resistance so this is the one i can take now substitute for this kg uh, for this cis equation 6 so then what do you have you will have minus ra equal to k kg cab kg divided by kg plus k so this is the rate expression for you and this also can be nicely written as minus ra equal to why nicely means just to get 
1 by kg by 1 by k. So, this is the rate expression. Okay. Now, I also asked you this question in uh, zero test. What is the bulk rate of reaction or uh, overall rate of reaction okay, in heterogeneous system that will come? This is called bulk rate. Why? Because now this rate expression is only based on bulk concentration, bulk conditions. Okay. So, the name of this is either bulk rate, bulk slash overall slash observed, observed. <coughs> ah, any other name? Rahul, remember? Ah? Ah, global, yeah. So, so many names, global rate of reaction. Yeah. So, that is the name given to heterogeneous reactions, because all heterogeneous reactions, the method is same. All heterogeneous reactions. Now, I can just tell you now, that <coughs> if I have a complicated equation, then I will have here m plus, uh, do not write that, I am just telling you. Yeah, this is the equation now. This side it will not change, but I told you mathematically it will be more complicated. Now I have to find out anyway C A S. So whatever form, you, know, you can also have simply quadratic equation C A square, C A S square. Then you have the quadratic equation C A square, C A, C A B. These are constants anyway. Then you have to solve a quadratic equation and get what is C A S and substitute C A S in yeah, in any equation, either this equation or this, uh, this equation. That is, what is the overall picture and approach to all heterogeneous systems? Approach to all heterogeneous systems. Okay. One more thing also I have to tell you here is, this equation is a wonderful equation for the discussion. For discussion. So, I think you know, in heat transfer, you should have heard what are resistances. Right? Here also, 1 by kg is a resistance. 1 by k is a resistance. That means, okay. so if I, I say that, I have at a very high temperature. At a very high temperature, I want to simplify that equation. Special cases. Okay. A special case is, when mathematically telling, k tends to infinity. That means, I have very high temperature and we know that when we have very high temperature, Okay. K will be very, very large, because exponential uh, increase. So, then what will happen to that equation? Oh, numbers, this is 7, 8. Okay. So, now, yeah, minus R A equal to? Minus R A B equal to? K G into? This is what is very, very important thing in heterogeneous system. Okay. Now, do I have anywhere rate constant there? Now, it is controlled by which uh, phenomena? Mass transfer. Why? Because that is the slowest step. Okay. I told you, you know, sometime back you have one uh, uh, example. I may have, uh, I told you also which is the costliest car, which can go to, to 500, 600 uh, kilometers per hour. But in Mount Road, if I go, if there are 10 buffaloes, walking very slowly, what is the use of my 500 uh, kilometers per hour? No use. It is controlled by only buffaloes and what is the buffalo walking speed? Huh? Abdul? 5 kilometers per hour. That is all logical. 5 kilometers per hour. You see 500 to 5 kilometers. So, who is controlling now? Buffaloes. Buffaloes. <laughs> okay. So, that is what is rate controlling step. right? And also, I think uh, when time comes, I will tell another example also I have, you are uh, hungry. When you are very, very hungry mess, all of you are very hungry after the class and then go to the mess. Imagine that they are only serving Id idlis. Idlis are coming over the conveyor belt. Okay? So, you all of you stand this side and that side, idlis are coming. When you are very hungry, practically can you see any idlis on the conveyor belt? Because the moment idli comes, <laughs> over. So, the on surface it is almost clean, but maybe how much time you can eat, maybe half an hour you ate idlis. 
okay continuously after eating half an hour what will happen to your hunger saturated so once you have that saturation what will be now concentration of idlis on the conveyor belt full nothing will happen everything will be going on so that is what is the profiles now we are going to draw with these two examples because now your hunger was so fast right and you will scold the cooks if they are not quickly supplying the idlis so what is rate controlling step at that time not hunger hunger you have mass transfer mass cook because he is not able to produce there is no sufficient mass of idlis on the conveyor i mean you you have the reaction you know hunger a tremendous reaction is going on inside okay capable of uh, you know eating anything but you are not able to eat because there is no mass transfer okay no idlis that is the same thing that is happening particle may be at very high temperature capable of converting any molecule coming on to the surface but where are the molecules cook is not supplying so mass transfer is controlling that is what is this mass transfer control and when you have the other thing that is kg tending to infinity that means when do you get this case uh, this is mt control this is mt control control yeah in the second case ma kg is infinity yeah no resistance to the film when can you get that yeah, when do you get thin film high grade high grade very high flow rate you see there is a relationship as reynolds number around the particle is increasing your film thickness also go on reducing 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 but i know you don't have uh, much uh, use of that because by sending infinity velocity residence time will not be sufficient correct no so that is why but that is the case kg so you can also reduce the mass transfer increase mass transfer increase mass transfer by increasing the velocity around the particle velocity around the particle okay so then you have minus r a b bulk are observed is now ks or no k into cab this is mass transfer equation where we can also write this is cas which is zero on the surface okay now when i plot this the profiles again that is the film thickness and this is cb cab right for this one when k equal to infinity how do i draw the profile extremes k equal to infinity that means the reaction is very very fast right so this is surface this is surface <coughs> here what is the concentration on the surface zero zero it is remember it is reaction very fast means you are very hungry so you can eat any number of it is and on the conveyor belt you will not have any it is left at all that is zero so that is why it may go to almost zero like this this is here approximately cas equal to zero on the surface this is the surface okay this is surface okay good so that means i may write this one as something uh, shape also maybe like this okay it's not sudden through the film you will have some concentration no? but on the surface it is on the surface i know you are not understood first one yeah why mass transfer what after reaction only very good question huh? yeah the concentration is zero there is no reaction correct what he said on the surface what is the meaning of that what is the meaning of k equal to infinity no no resistance no resistance surface is capable of converting any molecule whenever it just comes there it doesn't mean that reaction is not there whatever molecule comes there and also what you are drawing for you are drawing for cab reactant reactant so the moment it touches the surface then it is converted to product then what is the concentration of a zero that is the meaning of zero it is not lkg zero means no no, no reaction okay i mean extend delta x mind right yeah so that is what is the meaning okay good now this is the one now my example is very easy to remember when you are very angry 
okay idlis are coming okay it, it is not that he is not supplying but he is continuously sending maybe 100 uh, idlis per uh, maybe per uh, second or so but no, now immediately all of you are so angry the moment idli comes you are eating that means there is no rate rate of reaction there is you are eating idli right that is the rate of reaction but on the surface what is idli concentration zero that means you don't find any idlis that is what is the meaning of that okay this is mass transfer control okay this is empty control yeah the other one what is the other one reaction control uh, ah yeah, yeah it also right here reaction control yeah in reaction control how do i draw when you are satisfied you are not able to eat any more what is the concentration now all the idlis what you have are also simply coming so what is the concentration now almost same almost same that means how do i draw that line straight excellent this is cab everywhere this is which control reaction reaction control reaction is very very slow the fellow is not able to convert right surface on the surface reaction is very very slow so that's why you uh, that re uh, that entire surface is flooded with molecules because the, the the surface is not able to convert those molecules into product so that is why everywhere you have cab whereas in the other place it is able to convert so fast practically you will never see practically you will never see the a molecules the reactant molecules on the surface but in reality you will have this kind of profile so this equation this is the equation equation 8 is this this is equation 8 this one is equation mass transfer control uh yeah here i have to put no uh, this is 9 this is 10 mass transfer control ah uh, yeah okay 9 so this is equation 9 and this is equation 10 see and now when you want to design a reactor for example you you know the equation now i think i have just take uh, this example and then i will leave it to you now let us say that i have a packet bed where i am now uh, i am trying to design Uh, to find out what is the volume of the reactor okay i mean we can also convert that into weight of the catalyst later volume and we know that packet bed is a plug flow reactor so which is design expression you take this is the rate now which we got from heterogeneous kinetics a minus ra i have fa not i have mba already people have given me right and then minus ra i have so now if i know conversion i can calculate volume or if i know volume i can calculate conversion it is a new reactor where i don't have volume so that's why i will say that okay 90% conversion how much is the volume so what is the equation i have to use okay. very good v by fa not equal to so v by fa not equal to 0 to xa dxa minus ra so this minus ra is if it is mass transfer control what is the equation you are using here yeah that is the beauty there this is dxa integral kg cab 0 to xa you see now it is actually a reactor where nothing connected with reactor is there that means reaction rate constant is not there it is only the mass transfer coefficient what you require mass transfer coefficient so this is what is the meaning of heterogeneous reaction system so under under some conditions it is only the physical step steps that are controlling but it is not the chemical step which is controlling chemical step is pure chemical reaction now that chemical reaction is influenced by mass transfer step if there is not sufficient amount of mass transfer to the surface reaction also is poor that is the difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous whereas uh, whereas there is no this kind of mass transfer availability He is not at all there in homogeneous. It is there all the time. You have sufficient mass. Yeah, Pooja. Calculate volume by taking it as a batch reactor also. Batch reactor uh, again. Because you told us na ki how to. T by T by C na. 
हाँ हाउ टू कैन मतलब रिलेशन बिटवीन टी एंड बी इन दैट सेम थिंग व्हाट यू हैव डन इन दैट प्रॉब्लम यस यू हैव डन दैट प्रॉब्लम सो इफ इफ यू हैव अ कांटेक्टिंग पैटर्न एस बैच देन व्हाट यू गेट इज टी बाय सी एन आर इक्वल टू यू नो दैट इंटीग्रल दैट इंटीग्रल इज सेम एस दिस इंटीग्रल दैट विल नॉट चेंज That no, no. Be you are talking be. about again volume change and all that. Did I say any volume change and all that here? But sir, it's a heterogeneous reaction. Heterogeneous reaction doesn't mean you have volume change. If I have only yeah one mole, one mole going to one mole, where is the volume change? See again, please don't get confused. I think Pooja, that question is good because we know all Indians are brothers and sisters. Okay, so we don't know, but definitely same confusion also you may have. Heterogeneous doesn't mean that volume changes. volume change will come in the reaction only when you have mole change here i have taken simple first order a going to uh, b or a going to r so that is why that problem you should not imagine at all okay so if there is real change in the moles automatically this rate equation will change this is not the same rate equation what you get you know if you want to write that in terms of conversions and all that whenever your concentration is converted that equation is different for if you have volume change that volume change will come when i come to again uh, the homogeneous reaction so the idea is now this where we can clearly say that what is the difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous and under certain conditions you don't have to worry about reaction rate constant you don't have to worry about what is the order of reaction but you have to worry about only mass transfer coefficient mass transfer coefficient you know can you give me one example where this can happen in heterogeneous system it is very all the time it happens every day you see every day when you go to kitchen and all that also you see tea tea not tea bean in kitchen you can make tea but what is making tea flame, flame. what is the ah, combustion <laughs> yeah in all combustion reactions it is mass transfer limitation it is the oxygen supply to the uh, you know to the flame why ah so oxygen is required ah but oxygen oxygen is required i am saying that all the time it is that oxygen supply to the flame that is controlling rather than reaction as soon as the product is also formed pure oxygen also you can supply but even then that controls that is the point okay savita that is the point you heard of him you not heard of him no he said something temperature in all combustion reactions the temperature is very very high you want to find out put your finger okay so if it is not burning not much combustion <laughs> all combustion reactions you know the moment you see that red flame you know what is the temperature there is approximate uh, estimate how much it will be at least you know cigarette smokers don't smoke cigarettes very bad for health but unfortunately if you are smoking you should know the temperature Okay, what is the temperature uh, when uh, you are? Means you know that the tip will be glowing. You know what is the temperature at that time? Huh? Eighty-five. Six hundred degree centigrade. Six hundred. Okay, and you know what is that? You know by doing like that, what are you doing? You know, you are only supplying mass, oxygen. When you are doing like this, it is a porous. so it sucks oxygen from the not only oxygen air and all that from the surrounding air okay the because it is porous you are able to like that you are able to do so that means it is now taking more and more oxygen the glow will be more and more red i don't know whether you know smokers now now you start looking at the smokers and if they don't like that if they don't do what will happen you don't see the glow will not be there so mass is supplied there mass transfer you see how beautiful even cigarette cigarette smoking there is a lot of chemical engineer it is heterogeneous reaction oxygen has to be supplied okay this is a porous one that's why if you don't take porous one and then you cannot smoke cigarette at all if it is not porous But, correct no how do you supply oxygen because it is porous like that you do then oxygen is coming inside not only oxygen air and all that is coming inside so that's why you are able to smoke cigarettes tell your friends because you are doing like that more stress on the lungs not only more stress high temperature because now air is getting heated through that flame going into your lungs so that is why 100% guaranteed damaged lungs after 10 years 
that is why you should not <laughs> smoke cigarettes. Okay? You see, from we started with heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous reactions and stopped with cigarette smoking. 